Hi everyone, my name is Peter. Thanks for joining me at Our Worship Sound. I want to update a video that I did a few years ago about how to purchase a used Mac. I've been using Macs for a long time, and one reason that I don't ever anticipate moving away from Macs is the software that you can get for them. I'm a big user of their video editing software, their audio production software, and definitely a program called Mainstage, which takes a whole bunch of instruments and effects and allows you to play them live, uh, specifically for a keyboard, so you can get some really great big sounds. play them live and it's really a lot of fun to use and it's really a lot of powerful tools that go into it. Only available on Mac, uh, it won't run on mobile, there's no real Windows uh, comparison that you can get, so you have to have a Mac computer in order to run Mainstage. Uh, once you do, the software's only $30, so that part of it is worth it. Um, but you might be looking at the cost of a Mac and thinking that's going to be too much, and so I want to walk you through how you can save some money by buying a used MacBook. And we're gonna do it through eBay. Um, this is a process that I've used a, a number of times. I've always gotten good results and good machines getting it this way. Um, so what we're gonna, I'm, I'm gonna show you some different settings, some different things you can look for. So depending on your budget or your needs in main stage for what kinds of sounds you're using, you can get the machine that's right for you. So we're gonna go to ebay.com. In the search field, I'm just gonna type MacBook. So I'm, I am talking about uh, a notebook, not a desktop or an iMac, something that's portable. So I'm going to type in MacBook. And then uh, there are a number of things we can use to simplify the results. See, we see there are over 24,000 results there. So to narrow that down, you can put in the year. Um, and, and that's a good way to sort out uh, how much you're going to pay. We're going to skip that for now. And we're going to come down to RAM size. And this is a big one that can kind of go either way. But our choices are going to be 8 gigabytes or 16 gigabytes. The biggest uh, way that this comes into play in main stage is you think about a lot of the sounds are going to require samples. So, for example, the piano sound that I'm using here. It has to load in all of those different individual keys and, and samples that go into that piano sound. I have two types of pianos in this concert. I have a grand and an upright. And so all those samples are going in there. I also have some bass samples. Um, and so that's all loaded into system memory and that's gonna take up quite a bit. The biggest thing you can do to probably limit how much memory your computer is using is quit out of Google Chrome. Okay, if I open up the activity monitor on here and I look and see what's using what Google Chrome is a memory hog. So don't try to run, run Chrome and MainStage at the same time. Uh, for what it's worth, I did get an eight gigabyte, uh, eight gigabyte machine uh, when I purchased it a few months ago. Uh, and it's worked fine for me. The problem is when you when you start to hit that upper limit of your RAM, you're gonna notice dropouts in your sound. So you might switch from one patch to the next one. And in order to load the samples for the next patch, it has to clear out the samples. So the, the sounds that you should be holding out while you wait to transition to the new song might just drop out and you get some silence there, which you want to avoid. So that can go either way. Uh, as far as how much you're gonna more you're gonna pay for that type of thing, if you were to get uh, that sort of upgrade on a new MacBook, you'd have to pay $200 for that upgrade. So expect to pay something like that extra if you're buying a used Mac uh, with that extra RAM in it. Down here, you can specify Pro or Air. Um, I use MacBook Air for what it's worth. Screen size, we're going to skip over. Here's a big one. Okay, so in the last few years, uh, without going into a lot of research, um, Apple switched from using processors with Intel chips to processors that use their own chips and their own is called the M1. And what I noticed when I went to this machine, even though this is only two or three years older than the computer I had been using, it is way faster. Okay, so a lot of the things that I use it for, uh, even for basic internet browsing, it's just so much faster with this processor processor in it. So if you can afford to uh, get the M1s in like a 700 to $750 range, it's probably where it's going to put you. Um, it's going to be a good thing for you. So with that said, there are probably also a lot of people jumping up to that level, which is maybe making some of the Intel processors more affordable. So if you're really looking to save a lot of money, the Intel ones will run main stage, and I did it for a long time with that computer. Um, so that's a way that you could save money. But if you can spring for it, uh, an Apple with the M1 chip in it, it's going to be that much better. Okay, so... Once you have some of your parameters set, I'm going to go 8 gigs on RAM. I'm going to go M1 
on the processor. And let's go, I'm going to skip the year. I'm going to come down here to completed listings or completed items. And once that's loaded, what that will let me do is I can go now through um, eBay auctions and listings that have already finished, and I can see what prices different machines sold for it. I can go in for this one, which seems pretty low. Um, I can go in and try to figure out why that was low. Maybe it wasn't in very good condition. Maybe the seller didn't have a real good rating. Uh, maybe it had like some real high shipping on it or something like that. Um, so if it's marked as is or defective in any way, you want to skip over those types of things. But read through a, a number, check on a number of these different listings. If it's low, find out why it's low. Um, you're going to get a sense for what you can expect to pay for the type of machine that you're trying to get. So then once that's done, uh, uncheck the completed items and then go back and start looking through uh, some of these that that look good to you. Now I want to uh, I want to point out a couple things. Um, sometimes you'll see something that says top rated plus, and so you'll go in there. That means the seller has a really good rating. So I come down here, and this person has sixty one thousand uh, a score of that for their feedback. So they've done a lot of transactions on eBay, and that suggests to me that that person that's what they do for a living is they sell uh, items for people on eBay. Um, and they have a high positive feedback rating. Um, what I was looking for in a seller for my machine is I was looking for someone with a lower score, maybe somewhere between 20 and 200 or something like that. Because what that tells me is that's someone who's probably using eBay to buy and sell their own personal items. They're not doing it for a whole bunch of other people. Um, they have personal experience with any items that they are selling. And so they're able to give a lot more information and personal experience about the machine and then one thing that i would typically look for in the listing and this was really important to me as i was going through it this last time is the cycle count and so what that is, is i'll show you on my computer so if i go into about this mac and i click on system report i can go under hardware and power and then it's going to list something called the cycle count, which for this one is 25. When I bought it, it was under 20, and that was one of the lowest cycle counts that I saw listed for used Macs. And what that is is it tells like how many times the battery has been drained and then repowered. So it's basically giving me an indication of how much the computer has been used. So you want to look over all the photos and the descriptions and everything like that, but if they list that cycle count, and it's low, that's a really good clue that that computer is in good shape. It hasn't been overused. Uh, it's got a lot of life left in the battery and a lot of life left in the computer. It also tells you that somebody has given this listing a little bit more personal attention and they can give you a little bit more uh, idea that this is a good machine. So that's something that I would look for is the cycle count. So that said, there are a whole bunch of variables about, uh, there are a few key variables really about um, where you can afford to spend a little bit more where you need to save money and what's going to work for your sounds in main stage. So look for the RAM, look for the processor, um, get an M1 if you can. They're really fast. Um, look for a good seller who, you know, maybe has a little bit more personal experience and a high 100% feedback rating on, on their transactions. And uh, also look for that low cycle count um, to, to let you know if that's something that, um, that if it's a computer that hasn't been used a whole lot. So for what it's worth, I paid, uh, this is about three months ago, so September of 2022, I paid about, I think, once shipping and taxes were figured in there, I think I paid about $750 for the computer that I got. It was in really good shape. It's worked great. Um, yeah, it's been a really good machine for me as far as running main stage. So I hope that's helpful to you. So thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.